everyone, this is Chad with Good Crib Tutorial, and YouTube just announced that they are allowing animated GIFs, or GIFs, on their header art, the, the custom art that goes across the top. So I went ahead and made one really quickly. Uh, you can see it on my channel, it's right here. It just, whoops, um, kind of masks out the area around there, then adds some paint splashes pretty quickly and it doesn't loop it just ends like that and um, Howard Pinsky at Iceflow Studios has a pretty good uh, Photoshop tutorial on creating one where you're gonna bring elements in from off um, the canvas using tweening so I'm not gonna go over that because he's already covered that I just wanted to go over a slightly different technique where you can make something like this a cinemagraph if you go to cinemagraphs.com uh, I've done a tutorial before on this but not specifically for the YouTube headers but if you want to check it out, there's some pretty cool ones. But basically the idea is you have photos and uh, multiple layers, and you mask through in a certain area so that the entire photo is still just a photo, not moving, except one area you have movement going on. All right. So like in this example, for example, you have photo, and then there's a couple photos, a couple layers that we would use for that part. So to get started, I'm going to link actually to Howard's uh, tutorial on the tweening effect. If you just want to move text around and things like that, that's a great uh, helpful tutorial. Um, if you want to do this, we're actually going to use his support file. I hope that's okay. I'm going to link to it. So what we're going to create, and you can download my uh, support files in the links as well. And this is very basic, all right? I'm just showing the technique. Uh, so it's going to look something like this. It's going to have four frames and the whole area is not moving except that one area. Uh, the idea with cinemagraphs is we're not trying to make it look like the, the late 90s or the mid 90s web design where something's just constantly moving on the screen. This is supposed to be a little bit more subtle and more artful. Uh, and I could see actually a lot of YouTube channels having something like this at the top where something is moving but it's done more artistic way. Uh, so it doesn't have to, the, the Loop, it can loop is what I mean. It, it doesn't have to just stop at the end. That can be helpful, but if you can do something pretty cool like this, I think uh, it opens up more possibilities. So go ahead and open up the support file, and then also my support files. Of. It's just a bunch of koi from a koi pond um, at a park that I took of. I just burst mode with the Canon camera, and uh, what we want to do is go ahead and open up the YouTube layout.psd. So go ahead and open up the support files as well. And there's many ways to bring in these into there, but I'm just gonna click and drag around them and then drag over like so. And you can resize them ahead of time so you know that they would be in the same exact spot when you drag them in. You could snap to them to the edge of something, but I'm just gonna use it how I brought them in like this. So I'm just gonna hit enter. And then the ne next one comes in, I hit enter and so on for about, I believe five of them. And it's just going to place them in. The problem is that it's going to place them in as smart objects. And if you're not familiar with that, a smart object, uh, whenever you make changes to the original, it will be reflected in the new area. So to, to fix that, what we can do is if you just right click over the name of it and just do rasterize layer, you can do that for all five of them. And that will rasterize. That's one way to do it. Um, so now we have five layers of this koi and if you hit the eye icon the bottom second to bottom third from bottom fourth fifth you do simulate the movement there All right. so what we're gonna do is make a selection around the top here so go ahead and select the marquee selection tool the rectangular marquee selection tool click and drag I'm just gonna click it to that guide there then I'm gonna hold shift to add to the selection and so we're the top and the bottom we've got selected alright so with each of these select, so that let's select the top one, hit backspace or delete, backspace or delete. I'm just going to delete because uh, YouTube doesn't allow a huge file. It can't be larger than two megabytes. So probably can't have a huge uh, file that's a bunch of frames in, in an animation. Uh, and this is going to be on the desktop anyway. It's the primary area we're going to be uh, serving this area to. Some people might be on a TV, but then you can do some kind of generic background as well. So I'm going to hit the eye icon on the text. I don't really need that right now. So 
what we can do next is add, actually animate this. Uh, notice that we brought in the layers first. If you bring in layers afterwards or copy and paste something in afterwards, it will show up on all the frames. So we'll need to go to each frame and you know hit the icon if you don't want something on a frame. So that's why it's better to bring in all the content first. Then go to Window and then Timeline. And we'll bring up this panel down here and in, instead of create video timeline let's just do create frame animation and then click that I can bring this up a little bit there we go so we have the timeline here and what you want to do is click that down at the bottom where it says zero seconds make that just 0.2 seconds for this example and here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If we were just doing an animation where nothing was, uh, where everything's moving, you know, whatever was moving in the original photo, uh, you would just hit icon, then create a new frame, icon, create a new frame, icon, create a new frame, and so on. All right. But with Cinema Graph, if you notice in the examples, this is not all moving, only this area. So what you need to do is set up one layer, the top layer, as the layer that all of this is going to not move. All right, so that's gonna that top layer is gonna be visible, covering all the other layers up, except an area that we select and mask out. So let's go ahead and add a mask, a layer mask. To let me pull the layers panel out here so you can see it better. Down there at the bottom of the layers palette, it looks like a gray circle inside a lighter gray uh, rectangle. Go ahead and press that with the top layer selected. And what we're going to do is choose a nice soft edge brush. And you can hit the left and right bracket to resize on the fly as well. But just make sure this white box is selected, not the actual layer, but just the white box. That's the mask. And for this example, we're going to keep it nice and simple. I'm going to click and drag. Make sure your foreground color is set to black. All right, right there. And we want to paint in black wherever we want it to show through to the bottom layer. So I'm going to just paint in this area right here. So if I Alt or Option click the mask, you'll see that's the mask right there. All right. So that area is going to be moving. All right. So that is our first frame. Create new frame at the bottom of the timeline. Then, not this top one because we need that that's kind of our master file click the eye icon to toggle the visibility of the second to the top layer now it looks a little bit different now create a new frame then go back uncheck that create a new frame uncheck the next one now we have four frames I'm keeping it very simple for size sake and also time sake but uh, you can change the seconds like you know if you want more of a delay less of a delay and uh, where it says once, you can ha have it just end at the, the last frame and then it will just stay there. Or you can do forever and it will just loop. So if you press play, that will show you what it'll look like. All right, doesn't look as cool as the Cinemagraphs from Cinemagraphs.com, obviously, but you get the idea. This is the technique to use. All right, so once you when you want to say that you don't want to say this as a PSD unless you want to you know open it later with the layers to work on it but you don't want to save it as a JPEG because it will flatten the image and it won't be an animated GIF what you need to do is file save for web we'll bring up a panel and it will preview what it looks like All right and you'll notice we're at 1.106 megabytes and that's fine we're well below 2 megabytes so this would be fine to upload to YouTube make sure it's GIF up here or GIF and on looping options I have it on forever and you can hit play and it will again preview it and then you hit save and just tell it to save only the images you don't need the HTML with it and then you're set once you're on your YouTube channel if you if I was signed in if you just click right here uh, you know edit channel art there's a little pencil icon then you can change it and go ahead and upload your gif and it will look uh, pretty cool I made another one on another channel uh, that is looping right here alright so that is looping um, I made that pretty quickly 
but you get the idea. That I actually took from frames of a movie. And if you do want to do that, instead of using my support files, just open up a video that's either Creative Commons, you have to give credit, or public domain, or something you took. Um, say if it's an extreme sports channel and it's uh, some BMX riding that you did and you have some GoPro footage, then just take frames from it, hit print screen, and then that'll put it in the clipboard and then just paste it in as a new layer in your Photoshop. Then you'll have a bunch of layers, same thing. So on the track, on the video, uh, just move the arrow along and each time you hit print screen, copy and paste it or paste it into Photoshop. You can do the same thing. Uh, so that's how you create a cinemagraph look, animated GIF uh, in Photoshop for your YouTube channel art. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks. Thank you.